Welcome back to another episode of the Digital Wrap Up. My name is Riley and I'm the host and I'm the CEO and Digital Director of Harden Digital and Design. Have an exciting episode for today. We are officially bringing on our new employee to the podcast. It's her first time on the podcast and I've been hinting at it for a while now that we brought on a our new or slash first employee, our first real full-time employee outside of myself and Kaylee, who are the owners of the business. So um, without further ado, let's just go ahead and introduce Hannah Carpenter. Hi, Hannah. Hey, thanks for having me on. It's my first podcast, so hopefully it goes okay, but excited to um, tell everybody a little bit more about myself and what I'm doing for the business. Yeah, so I have a tendency of bringing on new people who have not been on any podcast before, and um, just like Kaylee, it's something that is completely new to them and they very nervous about it but uh, it's really just a conversation just here talking having fun and today's purpose we're not necessarily going to be talking about a specific topic of social media or graphic design anything like that but it's really just to get to know hannah Um, moving forward hopefully she'll be on the podcast uh, some more talking about different things in social media because uh, she is our one of our account managers. Well, not one of. Um, she is our only account manager at the time. So she's cr- out in the field creating content for our clients, and you know, doing all the day to day social media manager duties for the business. Um, and on on top of the work she does for our clients, she does a lot of the social media for Harden Digital and Design as well. Uh, I mix in some posts every once and then, and do all the podcast related posts, but. Uh, for the most part, she manages that side of the business as well. So, um, Hannah, I guess first things first, can you um, give a little bit more about your background? Because you weren't necessarily, uh, you didn't go to school for communications or uh, public relations or social media. I don't know if there's specific social media degrees. I, I don't think there are yet. But um, can you give us a little bit of background about what you did before coming to Harden Digital and Design. Yeah, um, I actually graduated from Ball State University with a degree in meteorology um, with a minor in emergency management and homeland security. Um, For the past few years, I've held jobs both with the state government and the federal government in both fields of meteorology and emergency management. Um, So that's really where my background lies, but, and I think we'll get into it a little bit more, it kind of led me to the field of social media and how I got to where I'm at now. Yeah, so Hannah and I first met uh, back at Department of Homeland Security, which I've mentioned in lots of episodes before, which is what I did before I took the business full time. And she was working there. um, And we kind of met during COVID, actually, during the COVID response. And we were both heavily involved in that, working 12-hour days for a few months straight, it felt like. Um, So that's kind of where we met. And then um, I know... She transferred to the National Weather Service after working for the state, and that's kind of, in a way, where you got your start in first managing social media accounts besides your own personal accounts, correct? Yes. Um, Obviously, it wasn't the entire job that I was there to do, but part of um, my job duties at the National Weather Service was that I would post on social media and even schedule posts out um, depending on like different events like winter weather preparedness week, severe weather preparedness week, and then also just the day-to-day forecast and upcoming storm systems I would post on social media for them um, with that. So that's the first time that I was actually in charge of scheduling and posting stuff besides my own personal accounts. Yeah, so that was your introduction to the dark side because... um... I have experience with it too when you're managing some of these bigger accounts for uh, government, whether you're posting, um, you know, important, timely information. There's always, I feel like I've had more trolls on social media when I worked for uh, the state with some of that stuff. I know you dealt with yeah, for the, sure. the, dark, <laughs> the dark side of people on social media, especially on Facebook there. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so that's kind of how your first introduction to it, but you've always kind of been big into social media or on social media for a couple of different reasons. And I guess the first one is uh, your personal account with, in recent years, especially on Twitter, can you talk about your Twitter following and kind of uh, there's that side of it 
from you being a meteorologist and posting your own weather updates and things like that leading up to storms, but then also the the fun side of it with Boo, the the Alaskan Husky, and everything that's came with that. Yeah, so um, it started out on Twitter mostly just keeping my friends and family updated on upcoming storm systems, mostly posting about upcoming severe weather events and snowstorms, um, just because that is kind of where my passion has always lied, and I just love posting, keeping everybody informed about that stuff. Um, I still do that, um, but also have added in a couple of other more personal topics. Um, the first one is, if you've seen my Twitter account, it's full of a lot of dogs, <laughs> mostly sled dogs these days, but mostly posting about um, recent uh, adopted retiree sled dog, Boo. Um, so posting a lot for the Ugly Dogs community um, on Twitter, which has gotten a huge following, huge group of amazing people, super awesome to have conversations with. Um, they love following along with my and Boo's activities now that he's retired. So that was that's a big part of my current Twitter posting. And um, another before thing you, before you go further, yeah. can what's your if you're okay with it, giving out your personal Twitter? Yeah, um, you can find me on Twitter at nine five Hannah Louise. Um, same for Instagram as well. Um, but Lo- yeah, the- lots of dog pictures, <laughs> um, good dog threads too. So uh, if you're listening and you want to see the life of a, a husky or a sled dog or anything like that, definitely check it out. Yeah, um, I have a lot of fun posting videos and photos of our life with retired sled dog Boo. And he is in the room. <laughs> if you're watching on YouTube, which I um, always have to do the YouTube plug, youtube.com slash at Harden Digital, and you can watch the digital wrap up and all of our most recent episodes there. Um, but Boo is in the room. He's right now to Hannah's side and laying down on the ground not making noise which is what we want so we're not going to disturb him yet but maybe we'll wake him up here at the end oh excuse me at the end of the episode and um get a little glimpse of boo the alaskan husky so yeah we'll uh we'll have to have him say hi he's he's sleeping as of now um but the i guess third and kind of Final part of what you can find on my Twitter feed is a lot of information and photos from Pickleball. Um, Going on almost five years now, um, I've been a Gamma Pickleball brand ambassador. And what that means is that I post uh, photos and reviews and stuff like that on my social media accounts. Um, That's more towards the Instagram side of things, but I do post on Twitter as well basically just talking about and promoting their products um, and also keeping up with tournament wins, um, how I'm doing in different leagues and things like that. So for the last five years or so, I've been a huge proponent of the Gamma Pickleball um, paddles and other pickleball gear. So you'll see a lot of that on my Twitter feeds as well. And you have a different, uh, well, there's Boo. If you can, if you're watching on YouTube, he just poked his head up and uh, into the camera, but your Instagram, you have a different Pickleball Instagram account, correct? Yes, and that is hc.pickleball, and I did start that separately because of being a brand ambassador. It requires me, well, not technically requires me, but I like to post a lot about that and give them um, as much promotion as possible just because I really believe in their gear and that it helps me become a better Pickleball player, so I love promoting them. I wanted a page completely dedicated to pickleball so that's why i did start um, that separate instagram account so if you're really into pickleball hc.pickleball on instagram yeah and i'm kind of the opposite where i just have my main instagram account just at riley harden where um right now it's pretty heavily dominated by pickleball posts but i'll mix in random posts of what I'm doing. A lot of times it's stuff at work in the podcast studio or uh, just random selfies too. But I haven't, I feel personally like I have so many other social media accounts for clients and things like that, that um, I don't need another Instagram account to manage. So uh, my phone is pretty full of Instagram accounts as is. Uh, So I've kind of gone the separate route and just kept everything um, on one account, which is fine too. Um, I know I've gotten a lot of pickleball specific followers but then I still have a lot of friends and family that have followed me ever since so 
Um, yeah, so that's a little introduction to Hannah, um, how she kind of got started in social media and uh, what she did before working for Harden Digital and Design. And um, I guess now you're managing multiple accounts. Mm -hmm. um, you have quite a few that I handed to you and then a couple that we brought on since we made the switch to Harden Digital and Design and opened the office and everything we've been talking about recently. Um, what's kind of been your favorite part about it? I would say my favorite part so far is just being able to learn more about so many different industries that I really didn't have much knowledge in or any knowledge in to begin with. Um, so just by being around them, creating content, visiting their office spaces or their businesses frequently, learning more about their industries and what they do helps me be able to produce better content for them. But also it's just kind of fun to learn little tidbits um, in each of their industries. Yeah, and I will take a wild guess and say that uh, the chiropractor has probably been your favorite one to work with so far. It's been super fun to work with the chiropractor, um, mainly because, I don't know, I just love TikTok and creating video content for them on TikTok has been super fun, but also very rewarding just to see that like it's actually working and it's gaining a lot of traction for them um, yeah. on TikTok. So that's a fun thing just to be able to create the content, but then also to have like actual proof like that it's working for them. Yeah. And it's something I hadn't worked in any type of healthcare professional or profession or industry at all with any of my previous clients uh, before bringing Hannah on. And it's been something that now that we're in that field, um, that general healthcare field, it's kind of opened my eyes to, well, we've been creating this content for the chiropractor, but a lot of the concepts and a lot of the things that we're doing can transfer over to dentists or regular doctors or other chiropractors that um, that same type of content uh, translates well to that entire field. And I know I've talked about this before, but I don't specifically want to focus on one industry or one field. I don't want to have too specific of a niche, but um, you know, having a few in that field is absolutely a great idea, I think, uh, because you can take what you've learned from this, our very first one in this field, which uh, is the chiropractor, and then translate it over to, I really think like dentist would be very similar. It's, you know, working on patients, what are we doing? You can't be as visual with it. You're not going to take videos of people's mouths while the dentist is in it or anything, but uh, the general concept of talking with a patient or um, something like that while they're undergoing their checkup or whatever it may be, that's um, the type of content that would be good on TikTok, Instagram Reels, and things like that. And what's the, I absolutely want to give them a shout out, what's the, the chiropractor's business name? Um, their name is Anchor Health Chiropractic. Uh, you can find them on any of the major social media sites, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at Anchor2Health. Um, so yeah, super cool content. Even if you're not, you know, looking, like if you're not in that field or, you know, if you don't see a chiropractor yourself, you can learn so much about the field itself and why and how they can treat so many different conditions like I didn't even know, like I just figured people went there for like back pain, you know, but there's so many different things that they can help out with. So that's one of the things that like I've really opened my eyes to. And I think if I don't know that the chiropractors can help with all these other conditions, I'm guessing a lot of other people don't either. So that's what I've really been trying to portray to them um, on their social media accounts. And that's what's really, I guess, kind of taken off on their accounts, which, you know, other healthcare professions could be like that as well. Yeah, and it's Anchor T.O. Health, not the number two. So it's Anchor to Health um, on all the social platforms. Definitely check it out on TikTok and uh, Instagram. Those are probably the two biggest ones um, there. And it's something that's exciting is that, you know, we or you and specifically created their TikTok account from scratch. And that's a first for Harden Digital. We hadn't managed any TikTok accounts and it's a first for uh, you managing a business TikTok account too. And it's, like you said, it's super rewarding because I think you just had your first super viral um, TikTok 
a week or two ago, correct? Yeah, I think I posted it around January 20th or so. And within a week or so of it being um, live on the platform, we've gotten just under 90,000 views on just the one video. I've had a couple of others that have gotten several thousand views, around 20,000 as well. Um, but that one video in particular uh, just blew up. Um, it seems like people really love kids on the platform. And uh, it's ki it was kind of unknown to me, and I'm sure a lot of other people too, all of the benefits that kids could have from visiting a chiropractor. So that's something that's really taken off and I've loved posting about. And But yeah, like I said, it's super rewarding to see that it's getting all these views and actually helping them um, get more people to their practice and just be more noticed in the community. Yeah, and it's something that uh, you create. So like how Hannah does it is she creates, she records one video and then that video is good for uh, Instagram and TikTok. And we're not cross posting or saving the TikTok video. She goes in natively to each app and I think that's helped. And uh, we even just had one of your um, Instagram reels, a different video uh, go, you know, Viral is a relative term depending on who's listening, but I think it's over, what, 17? Oh, yeah, it was it's over 17,000 views now? In, yeah. in the last 24 hours or so. Yeah, so it's it's awesome to see. Uh, it's awesome and kind of weird, interesting, random to see what videos do well on TikTok versus what videos do well on Instagram because, you know, the the video that has, you know, 90,000 views on, Inst or on TikTok doesn't have – what, nearly a thousand even? Just, just under a thousand. Yeah, yeah, on Instagram. So, um, but now this new video on Instagram that has 19,000 didn't perform nearly as well hmm. or nearly as high as that on TikTok either. So it's, it's interesting and I don't think there's necessarily a rhyme or a reason to it yet that we've figured out. Um, yeah, but... I haven't seen anything in particular and what I've tried to do is use the exact same like hashtags and captions on both just to see what works well on each platform. And I've noticed, you know, the time of day varies between the platforms. Um, some hashtags on TikTok get a lot more traction than those same hashtags on Instagram. So that's been a lot of the learning process um, for both platforms. Yeah. And I know that we, we work with other clients uh, like our, our realtor, Nikki Kiever, and, um, you know, it's something that I preach to both of them and to every client really is that the video is the king of content right now and I think will be for the foreseeable future. So any way that you can uh, implement video to your social media strategy, to the content that you're creating, the better off you're going to be. I know I started... Uh, recording vlogs on Skype with one of my clients. So we're putting out two to three uh, vlogs across the platforms there. And they're not on Instagram. They're not on TikTok. So it's more Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook. And, you know, they're not necessarily performing very well. Um, there's a couple of different reasons in my mind that that's the case. But overall, I think people just tend to watch videos more. So you might as well try it. Um and I had something I was going to bring up and then I went on that side tangent and forgot. So, um, man, it was important. That's a bummer. Um, anyways, we'll, we'll move on to, hopefully it comes back up, but we'll move on to, I asked what your favorite part was, what's kind of been the most challenging part or, uh, what have you found, uh, to be difficult so far, um, since you've started managing, different accounts um i feel like the same for the same reason that it, i've really liked it is kind of the same reason that i've also had some struggles as well as because coming into some of these industries that we're working for where i literally have zero knowledge about the company or the business or itself it's a huge learning curve just to know what kind of verbiage I'm supposed to use, what kind of hashtags I'm supposed to use, what are things you know that you should say about this topic, what are things that you should stray away from. Um, so just, it, it's kind of been a struggle, but a huge learning curve, just trying to work with the clients to figure out those little nuances um, and just trying to learn. Um, like I said, some of the businesses have taken more time than others. Some of them just kind of click and 
they're more fun to deal with. Um, some of them not quite as fun to deal with and a bigger learning curve. Um, just taking a little bit more time to work with the client to figure out those little nuances has been a little bit of a struggle for some of them. Yeah. And before we move on and before I forget again, I'm going to, I remembered what I was going to say back to the, the video uh, discussion is that even recently you've, for the chiropractor, um, you've taken like screen sh- or you've taken photos of say a person holding a spine because you're doing this kind of vertebrae series right now uh you've taken a picture of one of them holding a spine and then writing in the caption kind of what specific vertebrae you're talking about or something like that and you saw that you're not getting as much engagement correct yes what I was trying on Instagram is this, you know, the whole debate about video being the king of content right now. But Instagram recently has said that they were kind of trending back towards the photos and trying to get more views and clicks on photos rather than solely trying to get their videos to go more viral. So I posted, I kind of made a graphic and then just posted a still image with a caption on Instagram talking about a specific vertebra of the week. Uh, I'll let that go for a couple of days, and then I'll post the exact same caption, exact same hashtags, but on the video that's describing that vertebra of the week, and it still seems like the videos are gaining a lot more traction than the still images are on Instagram. So just a little experiment that I've been doing the last few weeks um, in regards to Instagram. And it, it there's multiple different factors that always play into it, so it's not necessarily, oh, it's simply... It's because it's a video, it's 100% guaranteed you're going to get more engagement. But, you know, the factor of having a real person's face on the post and actually talking versus just a graphic. Um, But I know you've done other posts where it's been a picture of, you know, we introduced one of the um, staff members and uh, you just had a picture of them and then talked about them in the caption versus the video that you recorded of them talking about themselves and I know that the video is done better on that even when you have had a person in the actual Instagram picture as well so yeah it's just interesting to see the small differences in types of content and it's even different from client to client uh, one thing that works for one client might not necessarily work for the other it's dependent on the audience and things like that so um, but yeah back to now to kind of Get back to what we were talking about, the challenges of managing different social media accounts. It's something that I went through too whenever I was onboarding a bunch of our new clients, and I think it will always be this way, is um, trying to learn specifically more information about the industry, their specific business, what terminology to use, because you can't use um, like... You don't say the words patients for the chiropractor, you use practice members. Uh, So like that's a really small example, but like we just started working with a church that neither of us are familiar with the 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 denomination of that church. So uh, it's something that, you know, one, okay, what's all what's the denomination all about? What are their beliefs? What what are they kind of? Uh, talk about want to promote those type of things but then two what specific words do you use and don't use what do you refer to people as like there's just so many different uh, things you have to think about when creating content and that's kind of where like people say oh well I could easily just post to social media and do all this stuff it's like when you're doing it for a business there's a whole lot more that goes into it than just throwing up a picture and writing a quick caption and a lot of different things you have to be constantly thinking about. And even more so when uh, you're not necessarily working for the business where you're contracted out like through and outsourced it through hard and digital and design. So it's always, it's always hard. And that's one thing that when we work with clients and bring on new clients, I always kind of say it's a one month buffer at a minimum of, okay, we're contract assigned, we've paid up, everything's good to go. Now it's kind of just, uh, we at least need a month to kind of get in our groove and start understanding more and um, trying to figure out the best way to create content for each new client. And um, I think like, for the example, with the Good Samaritan Network in Hamilton County that you've uh, been working with from the very beginning, 
it's something where you were sending them posts. You still send posts for approval each week, and they were making some changes at first, but I think now they're not, correct? Correct, yeah. We've gotten, um, I guess we know what they want. We know what they're looking for, um, kind of what to post, what not to post. So they haven't really had any corrections um, in a long time, actually. And we're doing a similar thing with the church. Um, on a weekly basis, sending, you know, I'm creating up a bunch of draft posts, sending them to them. Um, you know, at first there were a lot of changes that they had. Um, more recently, they're saying, you know, more of their feedback is these posts are looking great. This is more what we want. Um, not too many comments, not too many changes this week. So that's what we're striving for. And in that case where we're going from like zero knowledge, um, starting out, uh, I think it's, a little bit more than a month is needed. Uh, That's where maybe 90 days might come more into play when we're trying to create their content, get to know them better, sending them for approval. And I know it's not something that they're wanting to continue forever. And we're not either because our goal is to make things easier on them and take something off of their plate. Um, So I think we're getting there. I think we've made a lot of progress. Yeah. So... Um, to kind of wrap things up, I think we've touched on everything that I wanted to. Um, like I said, we weren't gonna, I thought about talking about something that, uh, is relatively new on Instagram and get into that after the introduction of Hannah, but I think we'll just wrap it up here for the day and leave that topic for another day. We'll have Hannah back on in a week or two. Um, but I guess moving forward, how to, to end this what would be, you know, in an ideal, perfect world, now that you're, you know, it's a social media manager, you can call yourself that, um, who would be your favorite business or company to run their social media? Whether it's big, small, local, U.S., global, if that you could just have one, pers- one business. If I could just have one business to run their social media... I don't know. I feel like it would be one of two things, which is kind of what my own social media is about. Either something like with dogs um, or something pickleball related, like with Gamma Sports, what I do with them is just posting about pickleball all the time on my own social media accounts. But if I could, you know, do that for a living for somebody and just talk about pickleball all the time, um, that would be super fun all the time to do. But, But I also like having my hand in a bunch of different industries like I'm doing for Harden Digital. So, I don't yeah. know. Get, it, doing, it wasn't a, doing just like one specific might yeah. get, you know, kind of old over time. So It wasn't a know. question of if you could only do one and only one. It was like just your ideal client moving oh, forward. Yeah. yeah. Anything with animals would be super fun, I think. But also just other activities that I'm just normally involved with, like I said, with pickleball. I think that would be fun as well. Awesome. Well, um, I think that'll do it for today. Wasn't too bad, was it? The Not podcast, terrible, right? yeah. Maybe we'll go back and see what it sounds like. <laughs> yeah, I, it, it's it always gets easier, and, and like I said, um, we're gonna hopefully. I don't think I've told you this yet, but hopefully have you on for more episodes, just because I think the back and forth conversation when talking on a podcast is a lot more entertaining for listeners. And um, so yeah, we're gonna have you on on future episodes and. You know, maybe have Boo back in here for I an think episode or Boo's two. Boo's awake now. He might want to say hi now. Yeah, he's been in the screen a, f- a few times <laughs> now. Yeah, behind <laughs> Hannah. So, uh, again, check it out on YouTube. And um, I think Boo will make the website as well, hardendigital.com, as an intern here very shortly, maybe before this podcast is posted. So go check it out. Um, more Hannah will be on the website with her bio if you want to learn a little bit more in detail about what we talked about. And uh, if you're a business who is looking for help managing your social media, uh, Hannah's great at it. Uh, I'm, I don't want to brag, but I'm good at it too. Whether it's either of us managing your social media, Harden Digital and Design would be happy to help you out. Uh, whether it's uh, just coming in and training your staff or working with you full time to create and manage content for you, we'd be happy to help. So. Uh, Send us an email if you want uh, some help or you just want to have an open discussion about where you're at now and what we can do. Uh, My email is riley at hardendigital.com. Hannah's is hannah at hardendigital.com. 
And then you can also um, contact us at hardendigital.com slash contact dash us. And uh, we'd be happy to get in touch with you and see uh, how we can better serve you. So until next time, uh, hope you have a great week. And uh, we'll talk to you next week on the digital wrap up.